Okay, Russell, we're back in Carruthers Canyon at your request. We're going to try and pick up the trail on Glanton, although I don't know if he left any clues behind. And honestly, I don't know why you want to go after... <laughs> oh, the organ harvesters. Anyway, yes, as I was saying, we'll try and find Glanton's trail, even though I don't think he's nearly as evil as you make him out to be. We'll check these corpses again. I didn't see anything the first time, but... We'll be thorough about it this time. We'll make sure we leave no stone overturned, or unturned. Oh, that, there's just body parts everywhere. There's just so gross, there's so body parts everywhere. And they have this baby stabbed with a throwing spear. There's a second baby here. One baby, two baby. So I guess this is not the baby that they captured from the Lopez family. This is a Sandwolf's baby that Glanton stabbed. Well, Glanton is definitely ruthless, that's for sure. But let's not forget that the Sandwolves stabbed the baby first. So an eye for an eye is not what I like to live by. But they stabbed the baby first, no backsies. If we can't find a clue on where Glanton is, then maybe we can... <laughs> we have a visitor. These organ harvesters are very insistent. If these infants aren't the Lopez's family children, then if we can't find Glanton, maybe we can at least find that missing child. I checked every single corpse. No leads on Glanton or that missing child. So I guess we're just gonna have to scout around. We really haven't explored this canyon all that much. Well, let's start poking around. Bedlamite's Refuge. We have apparently found a place called Bedlamite's Refuge. Okay, this place is heavily booby-trapped. I don't know who set these traps out. They did not want us coming in here. There are so many explosives. This can't be... Yeah, this can't be the Sandwolves, because the Sandwolves don't have access to explosives like landmines. So whose hideout is this? Who's living down here? Well, whoever they are, they were hostile, apparently. On, At least I hope so. Mad Prospector. I can just assume that he was going to go crazy and attack me. It was just his little shack with two dogs and some dog meat and a bunch of explosives. Which I have gladly taken, don't get me wrong. But that doesn't help us find Glanton or the missing child. Knife Point Cavern. A second cavern to check out. Someone's dead in front of the entrance. Just a random wastelander. No cause of death is apparent. It's a big cave. And there are some scorpions. Contact. Plenty of scorpions. Yeah, go ahead and kill these ones. They're not friendly. Oh, oh they are geez. definitely not friendly. I don't think we're going to find the escaped child in this cave. Although, if we did... Oh, no, that's not this woman. This is a woman here. Sending you to hell, bitch. Oh, that's a giant scorpion. Oh, that's a rad scorpion queen. Okay, okay. Dump a bunch of rounds into it. That's, that's good. Good job, team. Well, I didn't find anything in Rad Scorpion Cave, except a bunch of Rad Scorpions, which probably kept outsiders out. Not gonna find any clues on Glanton. Lady Luck is a harsh mistress, my friend. She'll kiss you at the altar, and the next thing you know, she's got the house and the kids. Karma doesn't make any promises. Doesn't deal with lawyers. It's cold, hard math. That's something I can believe in. Sometimes we just get unlucky. And luck is fickle, and sometimes we can't pick up Glanton's trail. Sometimes we just have to let missing children be missing. And that's a very depressing lesson to learn, but I guess there's nothing we can do about this. Well, maybe there's going to be something inside this. The Cave of the Warrior. There's a skeleton on a bed here. I can sleep in that bed if I want to, but I don't think that bunkmate would make the best company. I'm honestly not sure what these tribals were doing with some of this modern equipment. We got scrap metal, scrap tin cans, scrap electronics, and a workbench. But tribals wouldn't normally use that kind of stuff, would they? Hold on. Diary of Benjamin Hines, Volume 3. These are actually diaries here. Benjamin Hines. Is that this person? Is that a fourth... Book? Yeah, that's volume four. He looks like he wrote it while he was on his deathbed. I can barely sleep tonight, so I just started writing. I've begun a new chapter in my life, and I have an urge to document my upcoming adventure. I just read the first volume of his diary. This guy was a follower of the apocalypse, 
and he came here to study the Sandwolves, and they initially accepted him into their group. He also noted that they were polygamous and that they spoke a mixture of English and Spanish. So that's curious. They did have their own culture before they were completely exterminated by Glanton. Volume 2 detailed his experience becoming accepted by the tribe. He joined a coyote hunt, got bitten by a coyote, which was painful. He fell in love with a tribal woman. He got her pregnant, and he decided to live with the tribals. Oh boy, Volume 3 is where things take a terrible turn. Turns out that this place was mining silver. There was a silver vein in one of these mines. And once our follower friend here found out, he knew that there was going to be trouble. He tried to seal up the cave because he knew miners were going to be coming for it. And that's when everything started going downhill. It sounds like the Council of Elders for the Sandwolves was very much against violence. They were a very, very peaceful society. And he had to persuade them to become violent because he knew the miners were going to be a problem. So it's not entirely this guy's fault, but he's not entirely blameless either. According to his fourth journal entry, a bunch of mercenaries showed up. They killed a bunch of men, women, and children. They were just very, very brutal. So they retaliated. They killed a bunch of caravanners. But in his entry about the caravan attack, he mentions that they killed everybody except for a child. They took the child from the caravans, and they decided to raise that child as their own. So these savages weren't entirely savage. And if they could do that to the caravan child, then they might have done that to the Lopez child too. The Lopez child might have been inducted into the Sandwolves. And if that's the case, then maybe Glanton and killed that child. And sadly, he does detail his final moments. The attack on Silverwood failed. He took a slug to the chest. He slowly bled out. And he died. And that's his final fate. Amusingly, though, he does say that the reason that their attack failed is because despite their preparations and rigorous training, a random drunk sounded the alarm. So it sounds like Hobo Charlie may have saved this town more than once. Maybe we can talk to the townsfolk about this. Maybe they know information on where Glanton is. Do you know where Glanton is? Silverwood um, Militia? Whoa, whoa, hey, whoa! Um, organ harvesters? Legion! Another Legion attack! Okay. Well, I'm sure the town will be able to handle themselves. I, I'm sure they've got this sorted out by now. We can help them out while we're here. They don't need our help. Well, we'll give them help, sure. A little target practice taking out these Legionnaires. Suck my dick. Yeah, you tell them, Russell. Oh, hold on. Sullivan's about to be awesome. He's about to punch this. Yes! Okay, Sullivan. I guess I have to take what I said back about you being useless. I thought they'd run out of bodies, but nope. Turns out there's plenty more a coming. The Legion just loves sending wave after wave of troops to their death. Nailed it. Perfect. Left side. Left side clear. Right side. Right side clear. Whoa, whoa. Ah, right side not so clear after all. Aren't you glad we came back, oh. Russell? You're getting plenty of target practicing! Whose body was that? Is that a enemy's body? Nope, <laughs> that was a militia leg! <laughs> this mining settlement is going to need a couple more new bodies once this is all said and done. Whoa! <laughs> Like, I got flung like crazy. Uh, there's his leg over there! And his head is rolling downhill! He just got obliterated. That one's got a red hat. Oh, that one's got a red hat. Two Centurions now! Okay, these are high-level Legion enemies. Take out those leaders first! If they're wearing red, you better make them dead. I'm doing it! Don't worry, Hobo Charlie. Sheriff Charlie, don't worry. Whoa, we got him. Whoa, careful. You almost didn't survive that, Sullivan. You're lucky. You are so lucky. We good? We have defended Silverwood. Nice. Very nice. Nope. Oh. 
Hello? Salwe profligate. I come on behalf of my master, the Dread Centurion. Out of respect for your bravery, he will make no more attacks on the town. Good. He entreats you to meet him in the canyon, where he will face you in a contest of arms, if you are strong enough. Upon delivery of this message, I am to be liberated. It hurts. W liberated? What do you mean by liberated? <laughs> oh, God! That's what he means by liberated. <laughs> He's got a satchel charge in his body. Got it. We've lost way too many good men and women today. Mostly women. This town had a lot of women that were defending it. Were being the key word because they're dead. Let's go face this new Legion commander and defend this town a second time. Yeah, here we are. You and your little friends here. I feel like I'm about to lose a limb. Take out little Jimmy. Little Jimmy, I don't know why the Legion soldier is so small, but yes. Take out little Jimmy first. <laughs> I shot little Jimmy's weapon out of his hand. Now he's using a baseball bat. Like, he thinks that's gonna work. He thinks that's a good idea. <laughs> he is being defended by his friend, though, making things tough. Okay, now you, generic henchman number two. You will be the second one to fall. Actually, Vincent, I'm just gonna lead him back to town. I'm gonna let the town deal with it. They got automated turrets and more militia members, so they can back us up a little bit. You guys got this, right? You guys can help me out here? Taking out this guy? Yeah, thank you, Sullivan. Very much appreciated. And that final one, did he follow us? Cicero Talvius. Another named Centurion Legion Commander. They all got fancy pretentious names, but they bleed just the same. Yeah, you suck. Oh, okay. Well, you kind of blew up your own militia member there. Might want to be a little more careful with those explosives, buddies. Ugh. You are seriously killing us all here with those explosives. Enough of that, please. Once again, Sullivan, uh. you have proven yourself to be a surprisingly competent fighter. Cicero Talvius, you were by far the worst Legion commander I've ever fought. Bar none. There's no contest. The town of Silverwood has been defended from yet another Legion attack. Although I don't know how many more they'll be able to withstand. The NCR might want to send a few more resources this way. But as we all know, NCR resources are scarce. So they might have to make do and try and survive as long as they can. I think our business in this place has concluded, Russell. I don't think we'll be coming back. We didn't find Glanton's trail. And... There's nothing else left for us here. Hey, Dinky looks friendly. It's good to see you, Dinky. It's good to be back in Novak. I wonder how my project is doing. I wonder if hope has been upgraded yet. If not, I guess I'll have to make the finishing touches myself. Hmm, it's still not perfect, but it's definitely looking a lot better. I hope Zach appreciates all the effort I'm putting into this, because it's taking a lot of time. But I think it's going to be worth it. You're going to be better than ever, Hope. I don't know why you keep doing that with your hands, though. Where is the off switch on this? It's very unsettling. I don't know what gesture you're making, but it's... It's making me uncomfortable. Or aroused. I'm not sure! People say beer tastes better when it's been exposed to a little radiation. I think that's to do with how the hops make you stupid. <laughs>